You look good. <laughs> Do I look grumpy? I, I, I feel a little grumpy. I still got my pinchy shoulder. At my, uh, you know, the, I, you know, I had a, I, oh, it hurts. <laughs> I've got a pinched nerve, and I was talking about it last night. I thought, oh, this is sore. And I thought it would be less sore today. It is a little bit less sore, but it's still sore. So, uh, and then I said to, can we have a graphic for that on the show? And they're like, no. <laughs> a graphic for your sore shoulder? I'm like, all right. <laughs> and then I thought, well, the week can't get any worse. And then, uh, and then I wake up this morning to the news that our CEO Hall is taking my job. <laughs> That's not really true. But what? <laughs> Arsenio Hall is doing a, is there's a, some kind of uh, he's doing a, something with CBS Productions, which is a, a different a, and he's doing a new late night show. And I'm thinking, well, I can't go woo 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 with my sore shoulder. <laughs> but what was interesting, and here's what's interesting about this, Jeff, is the amount of people on the Tweety and the internet who are delighted at the idea of me getting fired. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that I posted. The yeah. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. He is not replacing me. He is replacing you. Oh, oh I'm sure Arsenio will be delighted at that reaction. <laughs> woo, woo. Yeah, no. Anyway, all I'm saying is there's always room for plenty more in the, uh, in the late night uh, clubhouse, Arsenio. So welcome back. But uh, when you come to the, uh, the dinners, don't sit between Jay and Conan. <laughs> Nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> I'm only kidding. There's no camaraderie between anyone in late night, except between me and Chelsea Handler, who I love. <laughs> That's true. Chelsea Handler, when I was, I was, I know we, we'll have a commercial break in a minute. Shut up. And I, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I did Chelsea's show and she had a massage chair, which is useful to me now because I, so I, I said how great it was and, and she said, I'll get you one for my birthday. And then it was my birthday a few days later and she got me one. She got me a massage chair and she sent it to me. So I, I wrote her a note. She's a lovely woman. I, I wrote her a note saying, thanks very much. You're a lovely woman. And I sent it to her. And she wrote me a note back, and, and my note was in it, and my note was crossed out. And she wrote, your handwriting is atrocious, never write to anyone again. <laughs> and that's when I knew I was in love. <laughs> we'll be right back. Sponsored by Applebee's. Come by and try our brand new Sizzlin' Entree starting at just $9.99. Only at Applebee's. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. gone on a little too long. <laughs> uh, I've still got my pinched nerve. I've got my sore nerve at the back. Did I, if you were watching the show last night, uh, first of all, I'm sorry your cable was out. And secondly, <laughs> no, I, I, I had my pinched nerve last night. Well, it's a li Here's the update. Little better, but still pinchy. <laughs> So I'm a little, I'm a little kind of, uh, a little grumpy. You know the only cure for grumpiness? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> On your own. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I've cheered right up already. I can't, can't even think why. It's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it, now, it actually is. 
It actually is, uh, because it's uh, Paula Abdul's birthday today. Happy birthday, Paula. She's 50 today. Really? I should... What are you saying who for? <laughs> I'm 50. I'm the same age as Paula Abdul, which means nothing. <laughs> But uh, anyway, she's 50. Her friends threw her a big surprise party. Well, actually, they told her about it last week, but to Paula, everything's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's not such a great day in the art world. You know, police in Houston, Texas are looking for a man who walked into an art museum and spray-painted a Picasso. Uh, the, the, painting, the, the Picasso painting is called Women in Red Armchairs. Do we have a picture of it? Whoa! Now, uh, can we show that on TV? Because... <laughs> These triangles are clearly vaginas. <laughs> I, no, here's a tip. If you're looking at Picasso's, it, you always look for the, the hidden vaginas. <laughs> Got your attention now, lesbian row, haven't I? <laughs> yes. I have. No, look again. You see, look, it's like, where's Waldo? <laughs> I, I can tell you where he is. Anyway, look, the... the <laughs> I've cheered myself up now, you see that? <laughs> anyway, the guy who vandalised the painting is still at large, but he was caught on camera, and today the police released uh, this drawing of the suspect. Do you have it? Uh, there he is. <laughs> Can I just see that? I want to see where the vagina is there. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the soon the cops will have the right guy in custody, unless, of course, he was framed. <laughs> your late night humor right now. There, there's your well-crafted little joke put together by a disappointed Harvard graduate right there. That's how it works. A member of a good American WGA, the Union of Writers, put together that joke and I went out and sold it like I loved it. <laughs> Well, that's the end of the good stuff. <laughs> see any more uh, vaginas in that Picasso? Let me see it again. <laughs> Man, I, I get about five. <laughs> anyway, the Picasso, you know, it was worth tens of millions of, of dollars and then it was ruined in seconds. I haven't seen anything lose value that fast since Facebook's IPO. Another <laughs> There's two jokes right there, two jokes, and only one cuss or two cusses? I can't remember. Oh, just one cuss so far? So far. <laughs> ah, my shoulder's feeling pinchy. <laughs> anyway, for a while the police suspected this attacker had actually vomited on another painting on the way out, but it turned out it was just a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this, uh, this incident does raise a lot of questions. Was the attack itself a form of art? Was it premeditated? Is Craig really going to stick with the three-piece suits? Well, the answer is... <laughs> yes, yes, and yes, I am. I am, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Toughens the nipples. <laughs> Did you breastfeed, Senator? Anyway, I think it's outrageous. You know, only a talentless coward would walk into a mostly empty room and attack the work of famous artists. That's why I do it here every night. <laughs> but some people are trying to argue that this attack itself is an ironic comment on the subjectivity of art. But I say poppycock. <laughs> Real word. Attacking a Picasso doesn't elevate you to Picasso's level. That's just like shaving your back and shooting a sex tape. That doesn't make you a Kardashian. It just makes you... Anyway, the debate uh, over what, uh, has, uh, what's art and what's not going on art has been going on for years. Back in the 1960s, Andy Warhol shocked the art world by painting everyday stuff like soup cans and then called it art. Then again, he also said everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. I am still waiting for that to happen. <laughs> but I like Andy Warhol, isn't that right, Andy? Yeah. Uh. Uh.
<laughs> Some people get really mad about art. A few years ago, an unhinged man attacked a Salvador Dali painting in a Glasgow museum, and people were horrified. But I think Dali would have liked the fact he was still provoking people. He would have, he, he would have reacted. Well, how would he have reacted? He'd have been like, um... Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> And there's always a the debate over what's good art and what's bad art. Good art versus bad art. Everyone has their own tastes. I find it pretty easy to distinguish between good art and bad art. They're, uh, well, they're, they're over there right now. It's very easy to tell. <laughs> But think of the college credit. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell the difference between good art and bad art with my eyes closed. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. All right, get off. <laughs> you know, when it comes to art, I'm actually a, a pretty tough critic. I personally don't consider anything art unless it's a painting where the eyes pop out and then I can spy on people from behind the wall. <laughs> I watch a lot of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? I didn't even say it. I just that was a you. great one. Scooby Doo, man. Oh, no, man. see, you, you're doing that thing. You're being the late night talk show sidekick. You're laughing for yeah. absolutely no reason, just to fill in time that would normally be awkward and unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> How can I possibly continue to, or at least attempt to deconstruct this tired old genre of television if you continue to help perpetrate it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that worked out pretty well, didn't it? Yeah, you said before the show, just keep laughing, don't stop, they'll never notice, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> You ready? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, you'd love to what? I think you know. <laughs> this is unresolved sexual tension. It's like moonlighting. <laughs> I just want to help Daddy with that sore shoulder. <laughs> How dare you ooh at that? That's not a real thing. <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. Coming up, I pose for a recreation of Van Gogh's skull of a gay skeleton with burning poppycock. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the show where uh, tonight Jeff Peterson celebrates eight years clean and sober. Right, Jeff? That's right. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> Just made it up. I don't know why. <laughs> you, you never had a problem with uh, drugs and alcohol, did you? Oh, I had other problems. <laughs> what? I think you know. Uh, you say it like that, like, oh, I had other problems. Oh, I think you know. But you didn't have other problems, did you? You're just saying stuff like that. In that funny way. <laughs> Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> It's uh, tweets and email times. You want to do a jingle or you want to play a jingle? Yeah, let's let's play a jingle. We haven't played one in a while. All right, then. Uh, what one do you want to play? Uh, well, uh, what's, what's your favorite? <laughs> I don't know what one you've got. Well, wait, play the one you've got. Twitter is the thing with all the tweets. You and your friends stay in touch, but never meet. Soon now the time has come to check the Parker, ask mode. All right, this is uh, from Derek in uh, Niskiana, New York, who says, uh, Hi, Craig and Jeff, my wife's cooking is really awful, and I just be it's becoming too much for me to handle each night. What should I tell her? <laughs> I think you're going to have to fake anorexia. <laughs> Say, uh, I'm, I've got a terrible uh, mental body dysmorphia thing. I can't eat what you're cooking. And then sneak out and eat stuff. <laughs> that'll work. You think that'll work? Oh, it worked for me. Yeah, there you are. 
This is from Lily in Montreal, Quebec. Oh, you like it there, don't you, Jeff? You love it there. And you've also you also enjoy Montreal, Quebec. <laughs> Uh, she said, I think she's probably a French-speaking Canadian, so I have to speak in French-Canadian. Yes, that's correct. All right, then. <laughs> ah, Craig and uh, Jeffra Peterson. <laughs> My boyfriend constantly makes terrible jokes and I always fake laugh. <laughs> How long do I have to keep this up? <laughs> Jeff, uh, you you, uh, you identify with this in any way? Is your boyfriend Arsenio Hall? <laughs> Don't do that, man. That's not nice. Arsenio is nice. He's a nice man. He's always been very nice to me, and he was nice to you, if you remember correctly. <laughs> Gonna take my job, that jackass. <laughs> He's not taking your job. That's what it's you a, said, man. You said it's, it's a joke. Job. It's a joke, man. It's a joke. It was a joke because people thought he was taking my job. It's just a joke. No, you said before the show. You said, "Oh, I see you. Don't, 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 don't." <laughs> you no, know, we're gonna have to have that thing looked at. He's going. He's, that's happening too often now. <laughs> this is from Damien in Reno, Nevada. Oh, Damien. <laughs> this one's for you, Damien. <laughs> Uh, hi, Craig and Jeff. I love to gamble and recently went to Vegas and made a decent chunk of change. I'll bet you did, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first thing I should spend it on? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, brimstone. <laughs> it's nice to get a tweet from Satan, though, isn't it? Yeah, love a Great guy. Great guy. <laughs> Are you crazy? Yeah. Welcome back from the edit, everybody. Uh, this is... This is from Charlie in uh, Leona, New Jersey, who says, uh, Craig and Jeff, I'm going to meet my girlfriend's parents this weekend before we move in together. How do I make a good impression? Oh, this is easy. Make a pass at her father. <laughs> He'll think it's a great joke. Yeah, that always works. Always. <laughs> this is from Beth in Providence, Rhode Island. I don't know if you can tell from this, uh, Beth's a flamingo. Um, I don't like flamingos. Do you, Jeff? They smell horrible. They smell terrible. <laughs> Hi, Craig and Jeff. I was wondering if Jeff had a special someone in his life right now. Jeff? Yeah, his name, it starts with a D. And, uh... I'm Damien? Damien, that's right. <laughs> Wait, you were going to make a thing out of it? Like, we had to guess? It, we just had... Oh, no! That was cut out! <laughs> that's... that's correct. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Craig. No, you, you, you can't do that because you can't do a callback to a thing that's cut out. Or can't... Yeah, what's... Crikey. Do it. <laughs> yes, my boyfriend's name is Damien. Yeah, the reason we cut it out is because Jeff said he was dating Satan. <laughs> you can see now why we cut it out. <laughs> uh, this is from Marilyn in Swamp Scott in uh, America, who says... Uh, Dear Craig and Jeff, my 25th anniversary is coming up and I have no idea to get what to get for my husband. Do you have any suggestions? What about an owl? <laughs> I know, I'd, I'd be kind of really surprised if someone bought me an owl. If you're out there and you're thinking, I'd love to get that douche a present, well, why not? <laughs> why not get me an owl? I'd, I'd, I could sit it right there and it could peck celebrities. <laughs> and they would have to feign good humour. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, an owl or, or a cockatoo. <laughs> no? that, that's the bit you're going to cut out. Uh, an owl or some other bird. What the hell? I could have said a parrot or a finch. I mean, Par yeah. parrot, finch, yeah. or a cockatoo. <laughs> Also, if I had an owl, then I could communicate with Harry Potter. <laughs> Why are you applauding that? <laughs> Want to do an awkward pause with the audience, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. All right. Good, yeah.
I think I saw your boyfriend there. Yeah, you did. <laughs> My first guest tonight is in a terrific new movie called Seeking a Friend for the End of the World, which is in theaters on Friday. Take a look at this. <laughs> Please welcome the great Steve Carell, everybody. Steve Wow, you look, you look, you look good, man. Oh, thank no, you. No, you look really good. Do like, I really? Yeah, with the glasses and the beard thing, it's like you look really clever. You're gonna win an Oscar. <laughs> now that's a, that's a clue. I've been doing this for a while now. This is how you know. Like you do a thoughtful, a thoughtful movie, right? This is a thoughtful movie. Yes. And it has a kind of you know quite a difficult uh, you know subject matter. Yes, it does. And you, then you're wearing glasses and a beard, Oscar. <laughs> For your consideration. Yes! Very nice! Good movie, though. Thanks. Good movie. I, I have to say, the idea of, uh, the, you know, because the idea, if, if you don't know about the movie, the idea of the world is ending. Yes. Yes! But it's not one of those, uh, you know, kind of one, oh, get me a team of convicts to go up on the asteroid and blow up movies. It's not no, one of those. No, it's actually, it's the opposite of that. Right. It's what everybody else is doing. Freaking out! Right. Um, yeah, it's essentially what, what, pe you know, people turn to, you know, Patton Oswalt, sex, yeah. drugs, um, drinking. Well, to be fair, Patton, I know, and he's been doing sex, drugs, and drinking, all, even though the world looks pretty good right now. <laughs> I mean, you could tell Pat, we got another billion years, he'd be like, oh, I'm good, I'll still keep going with this. He is so funny. He's a very funny He's man, great. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he, he likes drinking. I don't know. I don't know him that well. Oh, you really? No. Oh, I do. He does. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you? Do you have a drinking problem? Uh, all the time. Oh, I thought... <laughs> hey, uh, you're 49, right? I am. I just turned 50. How does that feel? Awful, man. Really? Yeah, I pinched my shoulder. Yeah, I yeah. heard earlier. I got a pinched shoulder. I, they had to do the camera. <laughs> what? Not on my shoulder. Oh, oh, the camera. Oh, oh the camera, yeah. I just, got, I just got a call for my colonoscopy. Oh, I, right, uh, yeah. They, they call you in. You know what? A friend of mine does something interesting for his colonoscopy. He gets together with all of his friends, and they have a poker game. And they, they go over to his house and they drink the laxative. They oh, all, yeah, yeah, that's... And so they all, you know, they all, excuse me, I'm, deal me out this hand. And they take turns. And then in the morning, they all get in a stretch limo and they go and they all have their colonoscopies together. And then they all this go out... This friend and, of yours, yeah. this, uh... How would you like to join Yes, us I time? would. Um, and then they all go out for a, uh, a great breakfast. Uh, well, it's actually, it, was, it wasn't an unpleasant experience at oh. all. It was fine. No, it was fine, honestly, because the drugs. Whoa, man. Yeah. 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 And, and so then... You can't think about it too much. No, that's, no. That's well, weird. yeah, but the day before is a little rough. The day before is not good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've had one already? I've had a couple already. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, that's what makes you a star. <laughs> so... If you, like, if it's the end of the world, right? So let's say it's, it, the movie is real. It's the end of the world, right? right? So what, what are you going to do? What would you do? What would I do? Yeah, if you had, like, it's like I a few eat, weeks left. Eat like a pig. Really? Eat like a pig for two weeks. I'd That's... smoke, man. I'd really? Smoke. Oh, I'd smoke a cigarette right away. I, you know, someone, you know, someone asked me today during the press junket, is there something you would do that you've always been fearful of doing mm. that you would do if there were just a couple weeks left? And I said, I would skydive what? without a parachute. <laughs> I would have them assemble just cardboard boxes. Right. And I tried, I try to get there. But and if they if they didn't break my fall adequately, oh well. But if they did, how cool is that? Here's the thing though. It it wouldn't work. Because you said I would get them to arrange cardboard boxes. But all the people that are cardboard box arrangers would be like, screw you, man, it's the end of the world. Right, I'm smoking. Yeah, yeah I'm smoking. I arrange your own cardboard boxes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah well, that's, why, why, that's a really good point. Yeah, like, it's like everybody. Who am I getting to service my yeah, dream yeah, at that point? Yeah, what else have you been up to then? You've been making a movie, the movie's good. It comes out on Friday. It comes out on Friday. Oh, yeah, there's another movie coming out on Friday. What? Yeah, yeah. There are no. Mu there are no oh, yeah, there what? Is. I'm in the other movie. I there. heard you were yeah. at the premiere. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. that last Night? Yeah, it was a big Hollywood premiere. Yeah, Exciting? Yeah. yeah, kind of. 
I heard that there was a, a premiere in Edinburgh too. Or, or yeah, I didn't, I didn't go to that because I have to be here working. But yeah, have you ever been to Scotland? You ever been to Edinburgh? I have. I, I I did I did a show in Edinburgh actually. Really? Oh, the Edinburgh Festival. Um, it, it was it was a second city show. Right. That they set up in Edinburgh and uh, and and Glasgow as well. We did oh. some shows. Did you have a nice time? Yeah, it was lovely. They they drank a lot over there. Yes, and we did as well. <laughs> Seems like you'd fit right in then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. I wonder what they would do if it was the end of the world. They'd be like, okay. <laughs> we'll just keep going then. It's very pragmatic. Yeah, yeah, fine. Let's keep going. <laughs> Punch me in the do face. You still, do you still do shows? you still do the, the improvised shows? And the, and no, I haven't. I haven't enough. You should do a little bit. Get your, uh, I'd you know. be terrible at it. Oh, it, it, I need a location. All right. Edinburgh. <laughs> oh, hello, dear. I'm in Edinburgh. See? Pretty good. What do I hear? Laughter. Laughter. Yeah. And you know what laughter is, Steve? The, the best, best medicine. medicine. Yes. In lieu of a colonoscopy, I will take laughter. <laughs> they are not mutually exclusive conditions. <laughs> if, if the drug level is correct, you can have laughter and a colonoscopy at the same time. Do you ever wonder what is going on during, if there is laughter during your colonoscopy? Oh, I bet there is. Yeah. I bet there is. Well, you know they have to puff you up with some air. Don't. I don't want to know. Yeah, no, no. In order to see, they have to kind of, there's a little thing and it goes... And it blows you up a little bit. As you say that, I'm imagining a guy going, <laughs> not a machine. Worst job in Hollywood. <laughs> Are you blowing smoke up my ass? <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> what would that be called? Oh, yeah. what would that... <laughs> it's called, it's called your agent. <laughs> oh, I made myself laugh. Oh. <laughs> Us. Yeah. Uh, we've got to take a commercial break. All right. Even although it's not the end of the world. Very well. You're going you're gonna to hear that a lot. You know? I know. It's not the end of the world. I know. Uh, probably have already a, a bit. A couple times. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, man. That's okay. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Steve and I were talking about stuff there. <laughs> but it wasn't colonoscopies. It's not that kind of talk. Although, the thing is, when you get to 50, which will be your next birthday, yes. then uh, you have to start complaining about, you know, ailments. <laughs> That's, I've thrown myself into it with gusto. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my hip's not feeling so well. Ah, welcome aboard. Yeah, that, that'll be the first thing, probably. Although there's something that you can inject into your hip, apparently, that's like a lubricant to make it I'm less. all about lubricants if yeah. you've got them, yeah. It's like, a, it's like a hip oil. Really? You yeah. inject oil into your hip? I don't think it's actually an oil, but it's... it's. Uh, Is it like hash oil or something like that? I think, no, I think they, they put something in a centrifuge and then they, they inject it into you. Is this a Hollywood thing? <laughs> it might be. Is this a little kind of like, mm-hmm, a little kind of... <laughs> Yeah, it's a special a oil. Uh, would you ever do that? Would you ever think about doing that? Like getting... I absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I would, man. I'm going to get it done. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting the full that cat lady thing. I'm getting it all. I'm getting the full... Just one fell swoop? Yeah, I'm going to do the whole lot, and then I'm going to come in here and deny that it happened. <laughs> Would you never, would you never like, I mean, like anywhere in your body, is there not a part of you think, you know, I could have that extended or something? Hmm. Let me think. <laughs> like, like a nipple or something? I would like one nipple to be extended. You might walk in circles for a while. I would just have to put it at magnetic north. Not true north, magnetic north. Yes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so what are you going to do for the summer then? Are you taking it off, making more uh, films? Where's yes, going, going back to Massachusetts. Oh, nice, very I, nice. Uh, my family spends the summer back there. That's where Lovely. I'm from. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, Fourth of July, barbecue. Fourth of July, that. barbecue, soft serve ice cream. Do you, wear, uh, do you wear Speedos when you barbecue? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Speedos and, and a little apron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of your nipples peeping out of the, uh... I just cut a hole to let that one breathe. 
<laughs> All right, you win. I'm grossed out. <laughs> I actually got grossed out there. Doctor, I'd like to talk to you about elongating my neck. <laughs> There's and a doctor in this town I that would do it. I guarantee it. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. say, they stuff. would pause for a second and say, very well, I've done several of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably not the first doctor you go to, but some, at some point some doctor's going to go, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're well. pretty expensive. <laughs> I think we could get that flesh from your heel. <laughs> Is we're gonna drill a hole in your heel, <laughs> and we'll extract a clerk of flesh, uh, and then we will insert. Oh man! <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna stay, <laughs> but I'm gonna have a great time and make a lot of money. Yeah. I was sued because of a drifting nipple. <laughs> drifting nipple. <laughs> They're one of the forgotten bands of Woodstock as well. I... <laughs> were you there for drifting nipple, man? Remember their, their single, True North? <laughs> you win. Keep your all, everybody. We'll be right My next guest is a New York Times best-selling author. Ooh. I wish you wouldn't do that. It makes everything seem so cheap. <laughs> His latest book, The Kings of Cool, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> is on sale June the 19th. Please welcome Don Winslow, everybody. Don Winslow. Don, well, welcome to the show. I'm very, I'm, I'm very, very glad. I'm sorry I'm turning into Foghorn Leghorn. Did you notice that there? A little bit, little, yeah, I, a little I loud. Did. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I say, I say, I say, welcome. I say, welcome to the show. How are you, pal? I'm well. How are you? Good, good. good. I, I'm good. I'm very excited to read this book because Thanks. it's a prequel to your uh, hit book, Savages. It is. It is. You, you enjoy, you enjoy the, the, the young people with the drugs, I say. <laughs> Not directly. I enjoy writing about the young people. The well, kids, you, know. you know, I was going to ask you. I mean, d did you do a lot of research when you were younger for this kind of thing? Were you, a, a, were you a big drug taker? No, I was a s small drug taker, you know. Small uh, amounts of drugs or <laughs> drugs in small places? I'm just... Yeah. Uh, That's yeah, how yeah. you get them across the border. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a child of my generation. So right. Say that. Oh. No? <laughs> So, uh, uh, but you've never been involved in any way with a cartel. <laughs> d define you, involved, uh, you know. Uh, d uh, dude, you are so badass. This is fantastic. <laughs> you know. You gotta be careful, though. I mean, because are you? I mean, uh, if you write about uh, some people, would they maybe recognize themselves? And yeah, they yeah. might. You know, I, I did a, a book several years ago about the Mexican cartels and did a lot of research about it. So they might recognize themselves, and they might recognize themselves in here. But you changed it to protect yourself and you <laughs> and me. Yeah, yeah, there we go, yeah. Uh, please protect me. Absolutely. Uh, hey, um. Now, you are a friend of, of my friend, Lawrence Block, right? Right. Because right. you're a crime writer. He's a crime He's writer. A crime writer. I read books about crime and have, <laughs> and have in fact, committed a few. Yeah. It's yeah. Right. I've heard. The, the first time I met Mr. Block. Yeah. Well, you know, let's call him Larry. Let's call him Larry. Let's but, call him Larry. But at the time, it was my first book. I'm a young writer. We were both nominated for the same award. And we sat in a bookstore. I sat next to the man for two hours. Wow too shy to ask him to sign a book. <laughs> he was my absolute hero, and I just sat there, and I kept thinking, and the next day, I noticed in another bookstore that uh, he was coming in after me, so I left my credit card with the bookstore and said, could you please have Mr. Block sign a book to Don Winslow? That's Which, which he kindly did. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, because yeah, yeah. he, no, did he take your credit card? Because Larry would do that. Larry would do that. <laughs> Larry he would do, do that, that, and then he would write a story which you were guilty. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Larry...
Are you a fan of Matt Scudder? Absolute the, fan of Matt Scudder. Yeah, the, yeah, the alcoholic. The yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. He wasn't going to write any more of them, and I bullied and bullied him and bullied him until he wrote another one. That was you? Yeah, it was me. Yeah, good yeah. man. Yeah. 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 I like to take credit now for the writing of the book. Right. Uh, yeah, you should. Yeah. I sh wait, wait, should. wait. Don't be absurd. <laughs> Larry wrote the book. He just, you know, he was probably going to write it anyway. You know the, the other one he writes that... We'll talk about your writing in a minute, but you know the... Uh, <laughs> you know that he writes about the serial... Uh, the, the killer, the contract right, killer. Right. Keller, Keller. Who's the stamp collector. Right. I like right. that. Yeah. The juxtaposition of the stamp collector and brutal psychopath. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I used to, when I was a PI, I used to read Block. On, Holy crap, on, you were a PI? I was a PI. No and I used, way. Uh, yeah, way. And I used to read, I used to read him on stakeouts, which is why I was a crappy PI. Yeah. Been on actual stakeouts. On actual stakeouts, and I would sit there reading, you know, Elmore Leonard, Lawrence Block, all those guys, and every once in a while I'd look up. But you, you were, know. but you were what living it, Don. You were living it. You living, were, living the good life. Living, yeah. living the, you were reading about stakeouts while you were while on an actual on the stakeout. stakeout. I know. Did you eat a lot of those little peanut shell things? I did. did yeah, yeah, yeah. Peanuts. Yeah, peanut M and M's were my thing. Really? Yeah, absolutely. God, yeah. Man, yeah. did you ever like dress up as a hobo and go into a strip club? <laughs> That's not. That's nothing to do with that. I, I, I just wanted that. to know. Yeah. No, no. Uh, that was you. Yeah. 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 I, I was known as the hobo strip killer. I yeah. remember. I remember. I worked that case. I, I dressed up as a hobo once uh, in Times Square back in the '80s, which you know, yeah, was vague. And uh, I was waiting for something to go down, as we say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I've been out there. For hours and hours, you know, beard, believe it or not, long hair, holy sneakers, jeans, the whole nine yards, all wired up, my partners across the street, you know, with everything that you've seen in the movies. And it's just about to happen, Sunday morning, early Times Square, and I hear this voice, a woman's voice behind me, yell out, Don Winslow, how the hell are you? Oh my lord! <laughs> And it was a woman I'd gone to the University of Nebraska with. Oh, no! And she was convinced they were all right. She tried to take me to the Salvation Army, <laughs> you know, buy me a meal, and I'm saying, go away, go away. I'm a, and she would think you were crazy, because if you said, I'm a private detective, I'm right, on a right, stakeout. Yeah, I'm on a stakeout. Like, oh, sure you are, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. So. That's really frightening, though, to actually... Did you ever fear for your life? Were you ever attacked by brutal thugs intent on ne'er-do-wellery? Yeah, my... <laughs> My job for a while was described as bait. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's better to write. <laughs> I think you made a very wise, wise choice. choice. You know, yeah, really, I mean, because yeah, yeah. you just sit down and type, no? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then if there's a big angry guy behind you, it's probably your editor yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, and thank and you. Savages is about to be a big movie as well, isn't it? That's what I hear. Yeah, no, yeah. congrats. That's going to be something, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate that's it. That's going to be a lot. you got a lot of money now. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Just, I have to be careful about getting mugged now. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. now you get something to lose. I know. Yeah, yeah. something in the wallet. Yeah, no, it's, it's not just it's yeah. not just a, you know a, a video store card. And then right. now you you'll have like a credit card. Larry Larry, Larry Block, Block might steal it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, congratulations on this. This is really I'm really looking forward to this one as well. Oh, Don Winslow, you. everybody. Don Winslow. Right. This is what we would do if it really was the end of the world. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.